we're going to uh, look at some of the headlines that are happening today, you know, and how they affect, how they're related to extinction. Again, we don't do politics here, really. We're not, we try not to. I mean, sometimes we might uh, not uh, really uh, intentionally. What we want to do is relate uh, the uh, headlines and some of the uh, news that's out there to extinction, how it relates to extinction. And again, what we're saying is that extinction is an issue of um, uh, ecological pyramid overturn. Okay, The ecological pyramid is going to overturn on us and there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. Okay, we, we might be able to postpone it a little or shorten it a little, you know, the postpone it or make it come sooner. But other than that, we cannot avoid it altogether. Okay, so let's get going with our extinction segment. Here we have uh, one bit of news. It says, uh, China renews embrace of Maduro's Venezuela as the U.S. looks on. Okay, uh, and so what is it? Venezuela and China are reestablishing connections after years of cooling ties with government contacts resuming and joint projects uh, floated in what amounts to a challenge to Washington. Now, what I put up there is 2016, a map that shows all the bases that the United States has around China. That was in 2016. And a lot of these are renewed. Others, you know, are new ones that have uh, been put in place since then. And uh, it says that at the bottom today, more than 400, and that's 2016, right? More than 400 American military bases encircled China with missiles, bombers, warships, and nuclear weapons, okay? But on the other hand, imagine now that China were to do something similar. It starts, you know, uh, having relations again with Venezuela, uh, that red uh, country there at the north of South America. Uh, it already has relations with Cuba. They share common ideology, communism, right? A political ideology. And then you have Nicaragua, which more or less is in the same boat. And they have good relations with these three countries. They could start new relations with other countries that might depend more and more on China. For example, Brazil, the big country there, um, its number one uh, uh, trading partner is now no longer the United States, but China. And so just imagine that. And I've been to Argentina, and let me tell you, lots of Chinese over there lately. <laughs> and so imagine that uh, goes beyond just the commercial aspect, and they start uh, putting their aircraft carriers, as you see there, around the Caribbean, maybe even in Mexico. You know, remember, Mexico might has a little bit of a gripe against the United States. Might want to recover the territory from Texas to California. Uh, and the uh, fact that, uh, you know, that was taken away by uh, President Polk in the 1840s. And uh, you might think that maybe the Mexicans have already taken over. <laughs> There's more Mexicans there than uh, standard Americans, right? All that uh, southern uh, part of the United States. I know because I live there. And um, so just imagine that Mexico were to have uh, relations with China to a point, not just commercial relations, but military, you know, they be, decide to do joint exercises, as they're called, <laughs> around the United States. What do you think the United States would do? Uh, would the United States be happy with that? Uh, so that's more or less the situation over there in China. Just think about that. Uh, they're all mafias. You know, uh, I look at them as all mafias. So one mafia say, hey, you're in my my backyard, I don't like you over here, you know, with all your weapons and, you know, your machine guns and bombs and hand grenades. And the others say, uh, well, you know, we're, we're taking democracy. <laughs> we're protecting all these countries, you know, okay. You know, so there's always excuses to surround a country. And just wonder uh, a little bit what would happen if it's in reverse. Uh, imagine what happened in, uh, what was it, 61 with uh, Khrushchev uh, sending uh, more than just uh, standard missiles, but uh, ICBMs uh, into Cuba, you know, the United States didn't like that at all. And so that's more or less the situation. All these mafias, you know, they try to see what they can get away with. You know? and so that's where the world is. Okay, uh, here's uh, another piece of um, 
news. And it's a little contradictory because on the one hand, same day, by the way, May the 3rd, okay, and in one headline says, U.S. envoy to China says next steps to improve relations are up to Beijing. And uh, the envoy, you know, he says, uh, we need better channels between the two governments and deeper channels, and we are ready to talk, Burns said, speaking to the la la la, okay? And we've never been shy of talking. We hope the Chinese will meet us halfway. We don't want a conflict with China. We don't want to return to the Cold War with China, and we need greater stability in this relationship. Same day, the news comes out, says, U.S. Senators launched a renewed push to thwart China. <laughs> Talk about, you know, uh, oxymorons there, you know, double talk. Yeah, on the one hand, they want to improve ties, and the other, uh, Congress saying, uh, we're going we're gonna to create problems for China, as many as we can. Yeah, there, there is a war going on already. There is a cold war, so to speak, going on. And the question is whether that's going to lead to a hot war. Okay. In other matters, here we have India, you know, apparently has surpassed China as the most populous nation, not because they counted everybody, but because they project the uh, uh, rates, the growth rates and so on, you know, and uh, says China's population is likely to begin shrinking next year. So China's coming down, but India is still going up, but it says India's fertility rate has also fallen substantially in recent decades from 5.7 births uh, per woman in 1950 to two births per woman today. And here you can see the, uh, the chart, okay? You can see what's happening to India's population in the last uh, 60, 70 years maybe, okay? It's come down. And so both countries, not only China, but, the United, uh, but uh, uh, India, uh, their rates are coming down, okay? But it says the following, it says, um, UN ex the UN expects the population to peak around 2064 and then decline gradually. That's for India, right? India having more people in China is no longer significant in a concerning way. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, it says rising incomes and improved access to health and education have helped Indian women have fewer children than before, effectively flattening the growth curve. Okay, so they think that's positive. Okay, because um, they're not producing children, instead they're producing something for the economy and their incomes uh, are rising, their health and education are becoming, you know, more modern. Then there's migration. And listen to this, uh, some 200 million Indians have migrated within the country between states and districts and their numbers are bound to grow. Most are workers who leave villages for cities to find work. Yeah, it's known as urbanization. It's happening throughout the planet. Okay, everybody on the planet is, uh, every country is having this urbanization movement, pretty much. And our cities will grow as migration increases because of lack of jobs and low wages in the villages. Okay, so what's happening? Uh, what's the cause uh, of women not having children, not having uh, why the birth rate is dropping every country on the planet. Uh, it's, it's got to do with urbanization. That is the underlying cause. And yeah, when you move to the city, well, you've got different education. You've got um, different, especially economic situation, right? Uh, maybe you can't afford 10 children anymore like you did in the country. Okay? So these are the situation. But I think the bottom uh, line is that uh, as you move to the city, you know, you stop having children. There's no room for children in the cities. And the same thing is happening in the U.S. Here's the U.S., okay? More U.S. women are avoiding unwanted and mistimed pregnancies. Births and pregnancies in the U.S. have been on a long-term decline. A new data analysis provides one reason. It's becoming less common for women to get pregnant when they don't want to be. <laughs> Okay, it sounds like they used to do, uh, you know, forced sex in the past. Is that what they mean by this? And they don't want to be now, okay? What happened before? The data indicates that far fewer individuals were becoming pregnant in 2015 than in 2009, and that abortion incidents went down because individuals do not get pregnant, not because their pregnancies continue to a birth instead of an abortion. There's also data showing that young people are having less sex 
perhaps because they are socializing online more and engaging in fewer risky behaviors overall. And yeah, then there's the issue of economics, especially if the kid stays at home, you know, there's a very little chance of them forming a family and they don't care about that anymore. They probably have some casual sex out there then come back home and they're not going to have kids inside their own home, their parents' home, you know. Fertility rate has been increasing among the oldest childbearing women. So women are having babies later on in life, 35 to 44. They run into fertility troubles at older ages. So I think uh, not only are they having them later, but the kids are not coming out uh, right. Uh, I think that's happening as well. Okay, but a lot of them need help of all sorts. Uh, uh, um, maybe there's more cesareans, you know. And this is the trend. Look at the trend. Scary, yeah? Look. Uh, this is uh, since the 1800s. Uh, do you think the rate has come down? <laughs> and where's it headed? Well, further down. Certainly not going up. The United States is making up for all that with immigration. So the United States is allowing all European countries as well, by the way, Western European country especially. They're allowing immigration. And because, uh, you know, immigration is kind of replacing the lack of kids, that, uh, fertility, in other words, right? That's not, that's not happening. And so keep that in mind. But fertility is dropping in countries like Nigeria, which used to have much higher rate of children production, you know. Now all those people are moving to the cities again, to the big cities, and they're not having children. And what few children they do have are coming to Europe and the United States, you know, from India, from China, from different places, from all of Africa. Okay, we discussed this last time with my son. It's got to do with AIs, okay? And one fellow who worked in the industry now quit so he can uh, speak his mind. And they say, artificial intelligence pioneer leaves Google and warns about technology's future. And I've got a problem with what he says, because on the one hand, he says uh, that there's a problem with bad actors using it for bad things. Okay, that's, that's one concern about, you know, the warning for the future. And then on the other side, the idea that this stuff could actually get smarter than people, a few people believed that, you know, and now he does believe it and it's going to happen sooner than later. Well, we got a problem. Uh, what is the issue with AIs? Is it that someone might use the AI for bad things, or is it that the AI is going to get smarter than people and will not need a bad actor to direct them to, you know, rule over him? So we have two situations here, and, uh, you know, these people do not, you know, um, really reconcile these two different versions. Are we concerned about bad actors using AIs or are we worried about AIs taking over the world because they get smarter than people? And meanwhile, uh, the spell says that uh, what the AIs are being used for is to replace people in what? In healthcare, climate, education, engineering. And uh, yeah, if anything, they're gonna be pushing people out of work. That's, uh, you know, again, maybe the last stage of efficiency in a in an economy where they bring these AIs they do a lot of work that humans don't do either as well or or whatever you know uh, the AI does it more efficiently for sure you don't have to pay them a salary so in that sense it's more efficient it's more cost effective so uh, you know it might happen that AIs replace humans in many aspects in many uh, parts of the economy. When not the if, but when that happens, all we're just doing is creating more unemployment. If anything, where are we going to put people to work? You know, are they going to just stay at home and receive a paycheck from the government? Is that the way it works in a uh, future society? So keep all this in mind. AIs, if anything, make everything more efficient, and that's not good. The more efficient we become, the less work there is. <laughs> Especially if there's no one to buy the product because they're on welfare or whatever, or unemployment, and so they don't have as much disposable income to go out there and buy, you know, especially expensive goods. And because of that, you know, they don't sell as many. The big companies that produce these goods compete against each other, they kind of uh, uh, merge or go out of business or whatever, and that's more unemployment and so on. And so, yeah, AI is not good news for the economy at all. 
okay, if anything. But for them taking over humans, uh, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's Hollywood stuff. It's got nothing to do with reality. It'll never happen. And uh, here's a fellow says uh, regarding some of my extinction theories. And he says he doesn't accept that, you know, it's going to happen through uh, food or through the ecological pyramid overturn. He says, I don't think reconstructing past extinctions, which is what I suggested the other day. I said, um, we should do 101, extinction 101 before we do extinction 102. Extinction 101, mass extinction or just extinction. You, if you can do background or, back, or mass, whichever one you want. Uh, but you have to explain mass extinction. You got to say, look, this is how uh, extinction occurred in the past with the animals that and plants that have disappeared. Please explain that first. Then you show that you know something about extinction. And everybody wants to brush that off, this fellow also. He says, well, I'm not going to do that because it's not relevant to humans. Okay. And so he says, what's going to happen? Was modern ecological conditions rearranged the natural order? talks about natural order and talk about ecology. So the guy is looking at the environment, not only, you know, your surroundings, but also the food, uh, the diseases, th these kinds of things. That's what he's got going through his mind, right? A lot of people th think like him. Biosphere collapse, that's what he's got in his mind. He's got addictions, you know, uh, shooting up, etc. cetera. Hedonism, uh, profit motive, you know, all these big corporations just taking advantage of us poor little people. You know, they sell us all this garbage that we don't need and that's bad for uh, the environment essentially, right? Because we have all this nonsense that we don't need. Infertility, okay? Uh, and then we have poison air, poison water, poison everything. Everything's poison. They sell us all this poison that we have to eat because there's nothing else to eat in the cities, especially, right? And so a lot of people think like him. They think there's this great conspiracy up there, uh, the New World Order folk, the Illuminati. And what they do is, you know, they have all these things up there that uh, they're shoving down our throats. And it's changing the environment, and that's what's going to kill us. Well, the problem here is that, you know, when he says the ecological collapse okay, or whatever you gotta you can't just say the ecology collapses you gotta show me a mechanism you haven't explained the mechanism how all this kills us okay how does this produce the extinction of humans none of this this is just a, a shopping list of of gripes uh, I don't like the government. I don't like the modern society because look at all the stuff that we got out there. We have prostitutes in one place. We have uh, all these drugs in the other place. It's a mess out there. Yeah, none of that explains extinction. Okay, so please explain the mechanism of extinction. Don't just say eco ecological collapse because that doesn't tell us anything. Okay, you got to have a mechanism. And again, that's why he avoids... Um, past extinctions because he cannot explain them. He would not be able to explain how the dinosaurs disappeared or, uh, you know, the Permian animals, Triassic and so on. He would not be able to explain that. And so he wants to skip that and say, no, let's go to humans because we're unlike all the other animals. We're not animals. That's more or less their way of thinking. Yes, we are animals. We belong to the world called mammals. But people think that because we have a higher level of intelligence than all other species out there that somehow God designated us the keeper of the garden. You know, we're the gardeners of Eden, uh, main gardeners, you know, the guy in charge. We're not. We're just another little animal in the kingdom okay, in, in Eden. And people don't understand that. They say, no, no, we, we rule the planet. Yeah, so did the uh, tri Triceratops. I'm sorry, the T-Rexes in their day. They, they rule the planet and they're gone. <laughs> Didn't help them any, the fact that they were the top predator, apex predator, right? Okay, another fellow says the following. He says, uh, there are too many people for food shortages to cause extinction. Africa is a great example. Feed Africa and the population explodes until the infrastructure can't take it, okay? Then a massive famine, okay? Then a few years later, the population exploding again because the food is being shipped in again. So they stopped shipping food in there. Why? Because of money or what's the issue? If nothing else, those who are willing to 
eat people, <laughs> will have a readily available food supply until population matches carrying capacity of the land being inhabited. Long on uh, Soylent Green. And let me, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, Soylent Green was a movie that they had uh, where um, uh, they used people, uh, you know, at the factory, they, they put the people in inside there, inside the machine, and that's where the food came out of, you know, <laughs> the feed that they sold the people who were living. Okay, so um, and it says there, and uh, this is in the Wikipedia, just the first sentence, right? It says by 2022, which is one year ago, right? The cumulative effect. This was a 70s movie, by the way. The cumulative effects of overpopulation and pollution have caused severe worldwide shortages of food, water, and housing. So I just want to make sure that we understand that that is not the theory that we propose at all. This is not a question of shortages, which is what this fellow thinks that it's a question of, uh, you know, uh, being close to the carrying capacity. When you exceed it, right, uh, density dependent birth rate, right, kind of thing, uh, there's going to be deaths. And what happens is that brings the population back down now it's back to carrying capacity we're okay we're a little too low we start producing children again that's what they have in the back of their mind that there's this seesaw going up and down that's not the case not the case at all that's not our theory by the way what we're saying is the global economy is going to collapse it will collapse there's no doubt about it it will collapse because we cannot grow forever economically okay we cannot grow forever, partly because population doesn't grow forever, and our global economy, human economy, is based on the fact that, or on the expectation, that in the future there's going to be more people, you know, more consumers, and we're going to have more demand. And so companies say, okay, we're going to expand because there's going to be more demand. If population starts coming down or levels off or whatever, then these corporations are going to have a problem because they will not be able to, through quality, uh, replace quantity, okay, which is essentially, you know, uh, what demand is. You need to sell more and more goods and services. And what's going to happen is if population comes down and people maybe stay at home, they don't need as many services because they're just going to stay with mom and dad or maybe they get married and don't have kids and they have a place to stay. You know, they don't need to keep buying and buying and buying forever. And especially if they don't have kids, you know, there is no new uh, consumer base. If that doesn't happen, the economy will definitely collapse. So what you got to look at is the projections. Uh, think of it this first in long terms. That that helps you reason it out. Are, are humans going to live a million years, a, li a million more years? And the question is, is population going to increase in the next million years? Uh, how is it going to increase exponentially, arithmetically? How is it going to increase for the next million years? Okay, that's the first uh, question you have to answer, or at least a factor that you should keep in mind. So if you think that population is just going to kind of stop growing, you know, we're going to reach some kind of plateau, and it's just going to go up and down, you know, more or less uh, in a constant uh, population overall, uh, well, you have to justify that because that's not happening. What's happening is the population of the world is becoming older of the world. Population of the world, of the entire planet, is be a human population, right, is becoming older. Okay? That's one of the reasons we're having fewer kids. Uh, the other one being, you know, we're moving to the cities, urbanization. And if we have fewer kids, what you have is the overturning of the population pyramid of humans globally, in general. Some countries will have a little more uh, younger people and they'll have more ki kids, but, uh, you know, especially the advanced nations, they're not going to have kids, you know, because people are already settled, they're, you know, they're stabilized. And the only way they're going to get people is through immigration. And so the question is, at some point, population is going to start gro stop growing especially as it used in the 19th century where it, you know, went exponentially upwards. That's going to stop. And it's already stopped, in fact. And now it's leveling off. And what's going to happen is you got a double whammy. On the one hand, you don't have consumers. And on the other, you're getting uh, unemployment because you don't have consumers. 
uh, companies close because they can't sell their products evermore, right? And at some point, there is a crisis and you have a collapse of the global economy. You can't just create money out of nowhere and say, oh, we're just going to give it to you and you stay at home, you know, because the AI took over your job or whatever. Okay, so, so the issue here is that if you're going to say that humans are going to live another million years, well, you got a lot to justify. And if you say, well, a million years, I don't know what's going to happen in a million years. I don't care because I'm going to die before that. Okay, that's that's true. But then you got to have an idea of whether it's going to we're going to live another thousand years, another hundred years, another ten years. I mean, if I get down to ten years, will will you react and say, well, no, we're not going to die in ten years? Well, explain why. Why not? I mean, you know, maybe the global economy collapses before the next ten years, and then what? What do we say? You know, so if you say no, please justify it. Okay, that's the way it works.